the brand new 6650 XT has landed. And it got me thinking, is this the new card that's going to make 1080p gamers rejoice? Well, there's only one way to find out. In this video, we're going to be building an awesome $1,000 gaming PC build for 2022. I'll be talking you through all of the components I chose for this build and why, showing you how to put it together from start right through to finish and looking in detail at the 6650 XT, seeing how it stacks up with the similar priced RTX 3060 and 3060 Ti in a detailed benchmark section. Let's do this. <laughs> Ebuyer is your one-stop shop for great deals on technology and gaming hardware here in the UK. If you're looking to build a new PC this year or just supercharge your setup with a new monitor or some peripherals, head over to ebuyer.com and check out their wide range of great deals. What's more, they've also got some great deals on pre-built PCs from AlphaSync, awesome systems that are ready to ship. Check them out at the link in the description below. The brand new 6650 XT comes in with an MSRP of $399. The same MSRP as what the 3060 Ti launched with, but around the price point you can commonly find a 3064 now that GPU pricing and availability has improved. AMD are pitching this as a 3060 rival. With 8GB of GDDR6 memory, this card has the same amount as a 3060 Ti, but less than the cheaper RTX 3060. 60, which boasts 12 gigs. This seems like a slightly weird position to take, considering AMD's own gaff when it comes to video memory on the 6500 XT earlier in the year, but I think 8 gigs will be enough for 1080p gaming and cranking those textures up. The truth, of course, is in the benchmarks later on. The card comes released alongside two other new GPUs, all of which are intended to replace their non-50 counterparts. Whether this is a way to sneakily increase MSRP pricing, or a way to give these cards a mid-life upgrade, that better competes with their NVIDIA counterparts, we're yet to see. Those cards, of course, are the 6750 XT and 6950 XT. I wonder what AMD could be competing with on that highest end card. Now, choosing the best CPU to pair a brand new GPU up with can be quite tricky. But don't worry, we've run some performance numbers already and come to the conclusion that Intel's Core i5-12400F is quite possibly the best choice for this build. With AMD making a resurgence in the GPU market once again, it seems weird to go Intel. But frankly, the chips are just that bit better at the moment. And while Ryzen motherboards are cheaper, the extra money you'll spend for an Intel 12th gen processor is, in my opinion, pretty worth it right now. This chip being an F designation also lacks any included graphics, which is fine because we've got, of course, a dedicated GPU and isn't overclockable. Something you will gain if you go Team AMD, but something that shouldn't cause us any major issues here. I'm going to be installing it into this motherboard from MSI, their MAG B660M Mortar. We've reviewed this motherboard over on geekwatt.com. There's loads of great content over there, so go and take a look and come to the conclusion that it's one of our favorite B660 boards ever. With PCI Gen 4 SSD slots, some nice MSI silver accent pieces, four RAM DIMMs, and a really, really solid rear I.O. that actually includes 20 gigabit per second USB-C and two and a half gigabit ethernet, it comes stacked with loads of features and is worth the extra 30 or $40 you'll pay for this over other cheaper B660 boards. You guys know how to install the latest CPUs by now, but if you don't, find the gold triangle on the processor and match this up with the corresponding plastic triangle on the bottom left hand corner of the socket. That's this one just here. Pop the cover back down, the black plastic, whoa, <laughs> get an action replay of that one. The black plastic went absolutely flying. And then we can pop the retention arm on the CPU back down. We'll come back to the cooler in a moment because before that, I want to pop in the RAM or memory for this build. Now, some critics of my part selection will be going, James, you've gone for a 12th gen CPU. The memory is so expensive. No, it's not because you can go for a DDR4 board like this one and lose literally zero performance, which is a bit scary. DDR5 has got a long way to go, but it will get there. This kit also has some nice white accenting on matching our case for this build which while is black has some white accenting too we're going to pull back the ram dims on the second and fourth slots slide the ram gently into place and click it down bit of pressure to each side and you'll get a nice satisfying click sound i'm out of breath after that rant but that's okay because we're going to move on to the next component of our motherboard assembly today the ssd 
Now choosing storage for any builds quite tricky, and to be honest the slow SATA SSD will probably bottleneck cards like this new 6650, a GPU which aims to deliver more next gen performance than its 6600 XT Sort of counterpart, which is actually the card it replaces for more money, is quite confusing. And I don't think the addition of the 50 makes AMD's naming scheme any more simple for a first time builder. What we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and remove the M.2 heatsink first of all. That's because our drive has some RGB heatsink action of its own, making it look nice and pretty in the board today. Dual Gen 4 M.2 slots is great to see and means you've got storage upgradability later, with plenty of SATA ports on the side as well for all the hard drives, should you choose to go that direction in a year down the line. Screw your SSD in with a teeny tiny screwdriver, install the SSD a bit like so, and we're good to go. To round off the work we're going to do with our parts on the motherboard, we need to pop in the cooler. And for this build, I'm just gonna stick with the stock Intel cooler. This might seem weird, but the new upgraded version does a good enough job of cooling our CPU. We're not trying to do any CPU overclocking, though we might overclock our memory, and it's gonna save us another like 30 or $40. I'll pop some great aftermarket coolers below though, so if you've got a bit more cash, feel free to drop one in. But for this build, I think the stock cooler is going to serve us pretty well. It will come with pre-applied thermal paste, but because I've used this before, I'm going to pop a fresh set of our own on. You then want to drop the cooler over the processor and line up each of the four plastic pins. Push these down one by one until you hear a click sound. We can then take our completed motherboard assembly and look at it with pride. Doesn't that just look actually pretty good? The cooler matches with the theme nicely and the Intel blue accent ring is certainly a nice touch. We're going to go ahead and move this into the case choice next up, which is Techware's Forge M2. This is a great budget case choice for a few reasons. First of all, it's very cheap. Second of all, it's got this lovely mesh panel on the front, which is actually angular and adds a bit of something. You've then got two 120mm addressable RGB fans behind it, a full tempered glass side panel, and a choice of either a white or a black interior, giving you loads of aesthetic options to make the case look really quite great. It's also quite compact, making it perfect for a first time builder who often let's face it doesn't want a huge cooler master half 700 evo clogging up their desk as great as it might look and of course as expensive as it will be for about 40 dollars this is great but i'll also link some alternative case choices down in the description below where we've looked at some of the best cases to buy in 2022 take off all of your cases side panels and then lay the case down nice and flat on our desk this is going to make the next stage of the process, installing the motherboard, a little bit easier. Now to do this, first of all, grab your motherboard, but don't be going all gone code trying to install it in the case. Oops, it's early on a Monday morning, okay, and this video is literally going out tomorrow. That's not a joke, by the way. You can take a look at the screws on the back of the motherboard first of all. MSI motherboards make this really easy nowadays with this big avoid collision watermark. You want to note the locations of each of these avoid collision watermarks, and there's eight in total. These avoid collision watermarks then need to match up with the corresponding standoffs in the case. In order to, of course, avoid collision. In this build, that means that this black one up here is in the right place, and so is the one in the top right corner, but we're missing one just here. The two that are already in the middle are also looking good, but we're missing one on the far right hand side. And then at the bottom, this one just here is perfect. If you can just see that and their head's not in the way, but we're missing one here. Missing quite a lot, but pop those in the allocated spaces and then screw the motherboard in. The the inclusion of a built-in rear I.O. shield also makes this process nice and easy, with our B660M Malta DDR4 being an amazing board choice for this system. And once the motherboard's in, we can move on to the GPU. Now I spoke about this briefly earlier, and to give you guys an idea of the lengths I went to to get this graphics card, over the weekend I drove an hour and a half to pick this thing up, because couriers, they failed us, to get it here and make sure we could bring out some content for you guys. We're hoping to get hands on with the 67 and 6950 XT soon as well. But to be honest with you, I think the 6650 XT is the one that interests me mostly. This is MSI's Gaming X Design, a GPU cooler design we've seen used very frequently, but used for good reason on the AMD Radeon cards. On paper, this GPU looks like a nice addition to the budget slash mid-range lineup. And some people will be going, James, $399 MSRP for a budget GPU? Cards have got so expensive nowadays. And it's definitely true, they have. But if this can provide us with better performance than a 3060 and come in slightly under a 3060 
GTI and it's actually available to buy, AMD will have definitely carved themselves out a nice position in the market. It would have been nice to see slightly more video memory, but 8GB is still going to be enough, especially for 1080 and a little bit of 1440p gaming. I also think it's going to look awesome in the case. Once again, those silver white accents, they just break it up and match with the overall theme of the build very nicely. As always, you want to hover the GPU, avoid collision. As always, you want to hover the GPU over your PCIe slot and this will tell you which of the rear lanes need removing. It's a bit of a snug fit, but that is by design. We're going to take out these two screws and this rear cover, slot the GPU in and then fasten everything down and make sure it looks mighty fine in our nice small airflow case. Looking pretty good. We can round things off by going ahead and installing the PSU. In this build, I am going to run you through how to do all the fiddly cables and wiring too. So don't go anywhere. But if you know how to do this, use the timestamps on the little YouTube play bar below to skip ahead to the montage or the benchmarks. The unit I've gone for is a Corsair CX650F. It's modular, 80 plus bronze certified, semi-fanless and RGB, meaning it lights up like a Christmas tree and adds a bit of solid on to our build today. Maybe we'll install it fan facing upwards to actually shine the RGB through this top panel. With it being modular, you don't have to plug in all the cables. You can pick and choose which are the ones for you. Go ahead and install your motherboard power connector first up. That's the largest of the bunch and just goes to where it says motherboard on the power supply. We're also going to add in a PCIe power connector to our PCIe. PCIe slash GPU. They use the same end on the power supply, but a different end on the motherboard. CPU power is next up. This one is four plus four pins and goes up to our processor in just a moment. There we go, wrong end. That goes in like so. And then of course we can add in our SATA power to just below the motherboard like so. Spin the case around and we're gonna pop the power supply into the back. Installing our motherboard's power connector, the largest of the bunch, the CPU power cable to the top left of the motherboard and the GPU power connector to of course our GPU, taking a single 6 plus 2 8 pin power. Once those are in, we can finish off with the front panel connectors. Plugging up our HD audio to the bottom left of the motherboard. It's got a pin blocked out and only goes in one way. USB 3 is next up, the largest front panel cable of the bunch. And it's notched, meaning once again, it only goes in one way round. JFP1 are our final connectors. These are the fiddly pins that go to the bottom right of the motherboard. And we'll pop a diagram on your screen now to make it nice and easy to follow along with. Now next up, we're going to take a look at the performance of this build and really evaluate our 6650XT. But first, we're going to see how good it looks when it's all powered up in the only way we know how. I'll see you in a second, but first, roll that montage. Some stuff. So it's clear to see this system looks visually pretty stunning. But do the performance numbers match up to the levels we'd expect and like to see from a brand new GPU launch? That's the all important question with any new card. On your screen now, as always, is a summary of all the frame rate data we were able to gather for a wide range of different titles. Don't worry, we'll be comparing this card to its competition as we dive into each game in more detail. Starting off with GTA 5. Here at 1080p high settings, Settings, we achieved 150 frames per second on average. We tested using the game's inbuilt benchmarking mode and the settings that we displayed on screen. If we take a look to see how this card stacks up against its competition, you can see we're not really gaining all that much over the 6600 XT in GTA 5 but in my view, that's more down to the restrictions of this slightly older title than it is the card. So hang in there for the next game because that's where things start to get a little bit more interesting. Next up is Battlefield 2042, testing again at 1080p high settings. Here we pulled in 103 frames per second on average at that high settings preset and compared this card to the 3050, 3060, 3060 Ti, and of course its sort of predecessor, the 6600 XT. Where the 6600 XT lost out to the 3060, the 6650 XT actually beats it slightly by around about 8 to 10%. 
The six extra frames per second here isn't a huge number, but puts it squarely in between the 3060 and 3060 Ti. Here we can see why AMD are so keen for us to compare this card against the 3060 and not the 60 Ti, but as I say, if you can find this card for a decent price point, then it may well just be a really competitive GPU. We also looked at 1440p to see whether or not the 6650 XT did have some legs here. It struggled slightly, I'm not gonna lie, at 72 FPS. That's around 20 frames lower than we saw on a 3060 Ti, but let's be honest, the 6650 XT is more suited to 1080p. It just so happens that you can actually play it at 1440. Now the next game is where things get a little bit interesting. It is of course Call of Duty's Vanguard, where we saw some incredible results. Let's start things off at 1080p high, just vanilla. No DLSS, no fidelity effects on the AMD side, just straight 1080p high settings. We achieved 132 FPS, a very, very impressive figure, which in of itself came in 4 FPS ahead of its 6600 XT predecessor, which itself was 4 frames per second ahead of the 3060. This shows both AMD cards leading out in COD Vanguard, but the story for AMD here gets better when we enable AMD's Fidelity FX Super Resolution tech their rival to NVIDIA's hugely popular DLSS. It catapulted our frame rate to an astonishing 184 frames per second in the latest flagship COD title. That's higher than the RTX 3060 with DLSS, which delivered 167 FPS, providing around about a 17 FPS increase. Very impressive from AMD. We also tested out a bit of Forza Horizon 5. Here we used the game's inbuilt benchmarking mode and this time pulled in just shy of 100 frames per second. When testing at 10 1080p on the ultra settings preset. Our results in Forza Horizon 5 align with much of our other testing. The 6650 XT beat out the 3060 and its predecessor, the 6600 XT, but fell short to the 3060 Ti by, frankly, quite some margin. Delivering around about 12 frames per second more than a 3060 and around 13 frames per second less than a 60 Ti, it sits squarely in the middle and delivers, let's be honest, some pretty good straight rasterization performance. We also tested out Halo Infinite 1080p high settings here yielded 115 frames per second. Once again, not a bad showing, and it lined up well against our other cards, this time knocking much more closely on the door of the 3060 Ti, something I was hoping to see with this card. The 60 Ti from Nvidia is an underrated GPU beyond means. It performs so, so well. So to see AMD a bit more competitive here was good to see. It was a similar story at 1080p high in Apex Legends, our next title today, where we managed to achieve 100 and 87 FPS. Here you can see that Team Red really did perform well against their Team Green counterparts, pulling in closely to the 3060 Ti and pulling out nearly a 30 FPS lead over the 3060. Not something I necessarily expected to say going into our testing of this card. We also tested Valorant next out. We'll go over this one really quick because the frame rates are always very high. 460 frames per second high to be precise. It slotted in once again right between the 3060 on 442 and below the 3060 Ti on 478 frames. Finally, to wrap things up, we also tested out a bit of Fortnite. We tried 1080p high and competitive settings, but let's look at high settings first of all. 135 frames per second in Fortnite, not a bad result really. The game visually looked pretty great and we had no problems with screen tearing or lag or anything like that. It knocked closely on the door of the 3060 Ti, just two frames per second behind, and was level pegging with the 3060. A very close spread here, and it did show actually some decent gains over the 6600 XT. It was a very similar story in Fortnite at 1080p competitive settings, where you tune everything down to low, but set the render distance to high. Here we got 210 frames per second, six frames more than a 3060, nine frames more than the 6600 XT, the non-50 version, and pretty significantly less than the 3060 Ti. But what's my conclusion in all of this? Should you consider the 6650 XT? In short, yes, if the price is right. And I don't mean that in the sense of, yes, if it's not a scalp price. I mean, yes, if it's around the same price as a 3060. AMD can get away with charging slightly more than a 3060 for this card, but most definitely not more than a 3060 Ti. The 60 Ti is definitely a better GPU on pretty much every count, but the 6650 XT helps to bump that 600 series card card a little bit higher from AMD and make some slightly more competitive in the mid-range. As always, you can find links to all the components mentioned below, a full review of this card over on the website. Thanks for tuning in though, and as always, we'll see you in the next one.